Hello and welcome and welcome to Aiden Eyewitness. It seems Manchester is skyscraper crazy, but it wasn't always like that. In this video, we take a look at some tall buildings, planned, in progress, and a few that were never built. I'm standing in front of one of them, next to Piccadilly Station. On completion, it would have been the tallest building in Manchester. This is the car park which slopes down to Store Street below Manchester Piccadilly Station, with the London Warehouse, now an apart hotel, on the upper left. On this site was to have been built Manchester's next tall building after the Beetham Tower, which was completed in 2007. It's known variously as Piccadilly Tower, Eastgate Tower or Inner City Tower. At the time, I went to a publicity meeting and picked up some brochures which had this image on the front. It would have been an impressive building, 58 storeys, 188 metres or 617 feet high. The height of Blackpool Tower times 1.2. The tallest in Manchester when completed. A handsome all glass design with a taller, narrower central core. To make way for the new tower, they knocked down these arches, part of the former goods yard as well as the wall on Jutland Street. So why wasn't it built? Well, it was due to the property crash of 2007 to 2010, which stymied a lot of other projects around the city. Maybe they could still build it. Will it go ahead? Keep watching Aidan Eyewitness. Only a short distance away, one of today's new towers is under construction. It's 1 Port Street on Great Ancote Street by Select Property and Renecker. It looks like they have reached about the 8th or the 9th floor. This is a luxury apartment building with lots of facilities for residents. It'll be almost like living in a hotel, like Howard Hughes did, with a full-sized apartment. This isn't quite as tall and slim as other buildings. It's 33 storeys, 100 metres, 328 feet high. And the interesting thing about this building is that it was reduced in height in order to gain planning permission. It was only approved on the third attempt, after it was brought down from 34 to 33 floors, so that it complies with the local strategic regeneration framework. I'm not sure if these visualizations show the 34 or the 33 floor version. Architects are Simpson Hall. It's in the northern quarter, a major selling point. I'm going to keep an eye on the building as it proceeds. What's going to happen to those brick buildings? Probably they'll be removed, so maybe this is the last time you'll see them. And now we move to Upper Brook Street, where a new proposal has caused controversy. Local residents objected to what they called the Monster, a building 42 storeys high, part of a series of buildings to be constructed along Upper Brook Street, next to Manchester University. Many local residents were not happy with the height of the building and the fact that there will be so many students living in such a small area as they see it. This is a life sciences PBSA project. PBSA stands for Purpose Built Student Accommodation. I do think there's a big gap between the language of architects, developers and local people. On this channel, I tried to bridge that gap. Looking along Upper Brook Street, we see the former car dealership that will be demolished. The Unitarian Chapel will remain standing. Once a ruin, it now houses student apartments. Further along the street, more vacant car dealerships and the Chinese supermarket WH Lung, where I've shopped many times. So is the monster going to rear its head above the rooftops of Ardwick and Chalton on Medlock? Well, despite the efforts of those residents who turned up to protest at the planning meeting, it was approved by eight votes to five. But the residents scored a partial victory. The height of the PBSA tower has been scaled back from the original 42 storeys. It's designed by Simpson Hall. Now let's look back in time to an era when Manchester had very few tall buildings. The town hall was still the highest. Ship Canal House stood tall, but one building might have been one of the tallest in Europe. This is Lee House, next to the Ashton Canal, not far from Oxford Street. You might think it dates from the 60s, or maybe even the 80s, but it was first planned in 1927. It's an attractive structure. Look at those bay windows, the brickwork and Art Deco details. But that's not what makes it special. I read about this building for one of my childhood architecture projects. I was astonished to discover that it was intended to be a skyscraper. Two upper sections were to have been added bringing it to a height of 65 metres or 213 feet. That's two-fifths the size of Blackpool Tower. It would have been one of the tallest buildings in Europe, but the upper section was never built. I made this very rough visualisation in Photoshop by cloning the base to represent the upper levels. It was built with strong interior supports that were intended to carry the weight of the upper floors, which they thought might be built at a later stage. Maybe they could still be built. 
It's a fascinating fourth dimension, not the present, not the future, not the past, but the might have been. Can you visualize those upper floors reflected in the waters of the canal? Let's stay with the 1930s and visit Sunlight House, the magnificent Art Deco office building designed by Joseph Sunlight and completed in 1931. It's one of my favorite buildings in Manchester. Joseph Sunlight was a Jewish emigre from Central Europe who built a career as an architect. It's been renovated, but retains its main features from the 1930s. After completing Sunlight House and other buildings in Manchester, he planned to extend it with a gigantic memorial to himself to be called Memorial Tower. This is a scan I took from the Manchester Evening News from 1948 on microfilm at the Central Library. I've enhanced it and superimposed it onto my video image using Photoshop and Final Cut Pro. It would have been 110 meters, 360 feet tall, with 35 stories and a gigantic clock face at the top. The white stone exterior would have soared above the center of Manchester, far higher than any other building, including the town hall. But the planning committee were not impressed, and so Joseph Sunlight's memorial tower was consigned to the might have been. Should we build it today in the style he had originally planned, using today's technology? Hmm, not sure about that. Now let's do some more photography and video of the most photographed and videoed modern architectural view in Manchester, seen from above Hume Park. These drone shots by Cinemaker, check out his channel. The area is known collectively as the Crown Street District. There is a master plan to fill it up with skyscrapers, but at the moment there's a gap in the middle. One proposed tall building that may fill that gap is the Lighthouse, to be built on Plot D, next to the Mancunian Way. 71 stories, 213 meters or 698 feet. That's one and a third the height of Blackpool Tower. It was set to be the tallest building in Manchester when first proposed in 2023, but viaducts too will rise higher. According to my usual sources, the Manchester Evening News, Place Northwest, and the Shoeshine Man on Portland Street, planning permission was applied for last year. I've not found any further information since then, so I assume it's still waiting for a decision. This is how the Crown Street District is said to look when all the buildings are completed. A short flight west along the A57, and we reach Vista River Gardens, part of Trinity Island, one of the projects I'm documenting as its construction moves forward. This is how it looked on the 26th of November 2023, and nearly three months later on the 2nd of February 2024. It looks to me like it's moved up eight floors, so we can work out when it's likely to reach the top. This is building D2, the second highest of four. 55 floors, 169 meters or 554 feet. Just a little bit taller than Blackwell Tower. The exterior glass skin has been applied to the lower floors. A familiar pattern is emerging. Yes, it's another building designed by Simpson Hoare. Vista River Gardens, mm, makes me think of a view over Singapore or maybe Bangkok. Who would have thought a few years ago that it would be possible to give a name like this to a building overlooking Salford? and seen through the beady eye of our propeller-driven, battery-powered cinematic bird, we turn to face the west and look down on another site where, in the not-too-distant future, more tall buildings are set to appear. This is Regent Road Retail Park, which appeared in the 1980s, as I seem to remember. I remember a similar one on Cheatham Hill Road being promoted. New, exciting, retail park, shouted the advertising. Hmm, a car park with shops around it. New, maybe but not exactly exciting. Well, now it seems this concept has had its day, according to developers. They want to build a new complex, including a massive new building, taller than the lighthouse, taller than Viaducts 2. The planned height is 264 meters. That's 866 feet, one and two thirds the height of Blackpool Tower. The developer is Solboy. I've not seen any visualizations of the tower. These are from ground level. I can see no reference points. It's difficult to imagine that this is the same location. It's reported that St. Bruce Supermarket, another place I like to shop, will not be affected by the plans. What is Manchester going to look like in just a few years time? Keep watching Aidan Eyewitness and I'll do my best to capture snapshots of the new city as bit by bit, section by section, it morphs into a new reality and the old Manchester becomes a memory. One of my motivations is to record locations before new buildings are constructed. I've tried to do this in the past, but it's frustrating as the urban area is too big. There's too much going on. I can't capture all of it. Just a representative sample. I feel a compulsion to do it. I just can't help it. 
So if you think you can help me out in my project, then you can donate to www.buymeacoffee.com or to co-fi.com. co doesn't take any fees. And if you live in a tall building, I have another favor to ask. Please see below in the description. If you found this video interesting, please like the video, subscribe to the channel and share with others. I've noticed recently a lot of people are sharing, which is great. And post a comment if you have any opinions, insider information or like the shoeshine man, tip-offs. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und auf Wiedersehen in Manchester and Salford.